So I have another project. Very easy project, actually. What's that bone, Papa? How's that bone? Is it good? All right. In my last video, I made these wooden jack-o'-lantern boxes. And I like the face. I, I like the, the actual idea of the cutouts of the face. So what else can we do with these cutouts rather than making boxes and jack-o'-lanterns? So, we all know how these welcome signs are gaining popularity and everyone has them on their front porch. So I figured why not incorporate a pumpkin cutout and a welcome sign. Now this is prototype one. I did add some distressing and paint to it. I'm not sure if I'm totally satisfied with the cutout. The second prototype I'm going to just V-carve out the face. That way it's one operation, no tool bit changes or anything and it may cut down on time machine time and also have a a more pleasing aesthetic to it i'm thinking anyway in my personal opinion there's something off about it that just strikes me the wrong way so let me try part two of this prototype so i'm setting up my machine now same design i'm just changing it up a little bit Currently, I have my width of the board is five and three eighths inch wide, 24 inches long, and three quarters of an inch in thickness. And here is the rough simulation. Just an FYI, usually when I do V carves in wood like this, this is white cedar. And the overall look that I'm going for is, you know, like a barn type weathered type sign so I'm not paying too much attention to the criticality of the dimensions if I were I would plane this board down to uniform thickness get any bow that's in this piece because right now I can tell that there's a bow but I'm not too concerned about it I'll overcompensate for that and the end result will definitely look like it's something that's been sitting outside and the weather has got gotten to it so I'm not overly concerned about the fit and finish of the V carving. All right, I have everything zeroed out. It's telling me tool change required, which I already have it in there. It's a 301 90 degree V bit cutter. I almost forgot, dust collection. Also, to continue this theme of the barnyard look, I specifically designed the lettering where the shapes of the lettering are not exactly perfect. So let's take a look at the finished product. From a design perspective, I think it came out pretty good. Although I may increase the size of the actual face, the pumpkin, but overall I'm pleased with the way it looks. All right, let's take a look at both examples. Obviously, they're definitely different. This one, I made the W a little larger, and then I decreased the size on this iteration. On this one, obviously, I added some distress and some, some paint. This one certainly is much faster because it's just one operation. This one requires a bit change. I think for ease, I'm probably gonna go with this one and make several of them. It's easier. I know a lot of you are gonna be like cringing right now because I'm not even gonna sand this. The little fiber is left behind because this is a very soft wood. It's cedar. And probably because my V-bit is on its way out a little dull. But overall, I think it adds to the aesthetic. So I think I'm just gonna leave the little fibers, the little the little raised fibers within the lettering. And you can actually, I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but you can actually see the planar marks in the wood from where it came from the sawmill. I'm gonna leave those in there too. That adds to the value. Let's talk wood, what I'm using. I'm using what's called dog ed fence pickets, and I picked these up for $8.30 a piece. 
They surfaced on both sides, no nail holes, they're brand new, straight from the sawmill. And I specifically designed this where it's 24 inches in length, these signs. So this piece will yield three of these signs. See what I'm saying here? So this is a great project for beginners as well for CNC. And it's a very basic uh, sign and you can't get much simpler than this. Your imagination is your limit. So $8.30 makes me three of these signs. If you wanna sell them for 15 to 20 bucks a piece, what a return on investment. So normally what I like to do during this phase is to apply a finish. And my, my normal method of finishing is I'll put a base coat, a darker base coat, sand it back, and then followed by like a whitewash. So in this case, I'm using a Krylon uh, satin black uh, paint, spray paint, and a whitewash stain. So one caveat to this is normally what I do, obviously, is I try to seal the wood before I put it on the CNC. I usually use lacquer, min wax lacquer, and that prevents any paint bleed within the grain of the wood. But obviously, the look I'm going for, that lends itself to the overall characteristic of the, you know, the barnyard look. All right, first base coat done. So what I think I'm going to do also is add a hint of orange in there as well. This will all lighten up once it dries. I may sand it back just a bit and then possibly adding some orange to it. You know, I just realized my shirt's on inside out. I think I last left off with um, doing the base coat in black satin and hitting it with a whitewash, sanding it back in between steps to my desired look, I guess, if you will. And so let me just show you. So this is the first one I did. I'm not too crazy about the cutout. This just didn't work for me. I added some of the orange to it and I used this Colormax Paint and Primer Pumpkin Orange at the big box stores, $3.95. So I added this and I strategically placed some of the darker colors to accentuate the face a little bit and also the lettering, highlight the lettering. I know a lot of you are cringing because again, the aesthetic that I'm looking for is a uh, barnyard um, rustic look, that's it. And to achieve the rustic look, you use the wood in its original state because it has all the planar marks from the sawmill and some of the imperfections that you may or may not want to sand out, depending on if the imperfections get in the way of the lettering. So, adds to the character, right? So this is one. This is, I don't like this one. What I do like is I changed it up. I took out the cutout and, and made it a V-carve. Um, so... This is the one I'm going with. It has the same process with the paint. It has the base coat of the satin black, whitewash, sand in between steps to your desired uh, end result. I want it, wow, it's pouring out. Hold on, let me turn this shit around. All right, so after that step with the whitewash, I sand it in between coats to reveal some of the grain because the black actually highlights the grain, which is really nice. And you can see how, you know, I left a lot of the fuzzies, you know, because I want that look. But I will quickly show you the process of, you know, getting the boards down to length and cutting them and, you know, putting them on the machine. This one I can see through. I, I kind of like this one, but there's something about it. Maybe the face is too big. I don't know. I just don't like it. All right. First rule in Fight Club, never use any other tool other than your CNC. 24 inches long, bam. Twenty-four inches in length, three of them. Do -do 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 -do. This is a new feature within the software. It's a, it's actually an upgrade. I'll show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Like that, like that. Okay. I got my file loaded. Now I'm going to put that in there like that. Okay. And uh, I got my my 90 degree V bit in there. Okay. And um, I zeroed everything out. Let me put this in here. Oh, yeah, shit. 
you know, the upgrade to the software doesn't compensate, you know, if you don't shake. So, I'm gonna put that in there. I got my board. All right, hold on. All right, got everything loaded. We're good. It's done. Let's turn you around. All right. Look at that. Alright, so I'm having a little fun here, but as you can see, I've been a little busy. I made seven completed welcome signs with the jack-o'-lantern face. So this again is a very simple, quick carving. It took about 15 minutes on the machine, probably could have ramped it up even faster. And But the interesting piece of this is it brings in your artistic flavor with some paint. So let me just show you... Some of the steps, obviously, I went through them earlier. This is the first pass at it. And I wasn't too crazy about the face, if you remember. But I like the carving, the V-carving. So that was one of them. I'll put that aside. And the second iteration of that prototype was pretty much the completed carving version of it. But I didn't like the paint. It was a little too dark. But still, I like the way it came out. So I finally decided on what I have here. So basically what I did was I two applications of whitewash and also some black matte spray paint, sanded that back a little bit and also added a little orange flare to it to highlight some of the carvings. And as you can see, each face is a little different, which is unique. Kind of tells a story that these are, you know, somewhat handmade. Some component was done by hand anyway. That one I'm not too crazy about, but the rest of them I like. I, I really like the way the grain pops and it makes it look more like a pumpkin face. But again, these are very simple to make, you know, and your imagination is the limit when it comes to finishing them by hand with whatever paint scheme you want to go with. These are white cedar, so you don't have to paint them. You can leave them natural and let the weather be your artist and they'll turn a nice patina gray. I'm not making any more pumpkin stuff. I'm done. All right. If you enjoyed this content, and I know you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh, yeah. And follow me on Instagram, JoePalumbo221. And also, uh...